Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to talk about relative humidity. Relative humidity is a variable that we use most often to report the amount of moisture in our atmosphere. You will remember from my previous videos that some other variables we used were mixing ratio, specific humidity Q, absolute humidity A, water vapor pressure E, and we also defined saturation vapor pressure ES. This is all from previous videos. Relative humidity is defined as the ratio between partial pressure of water vapor and saturation pressure of water vapor at a given temperature, and then we multiply this by 100 to get result in percentages. That's the formula. Now let's be a little bit technical and notice that we can express relative humidity if needed other way as well. Because we know equation of state says that partial pressure of water vapor is density of water vapor times gas constant for water vapor times temperature. And similarly, therefore, we can write that saturation pressure of water vapor is saturation density of water vapor times gas constant of water vapor times temperature. So if I substitute these two equations here, you will see I can express this as well as density of water vapor divided by the saturation density of water vapor times 100 because R, V and T cancels in the nominator in and denominator. This is not most common way to calculate relative humidity because as I said many times, densities are very difficult to, to measure in the atmosphere. However, if you do have these densities, you can calculate relative humidity like this. Moreover, we also know the density, let's say, of water vapor is mass of water vapor divided by the volume of the parcel of air in which we are measuring this mass. So therefore, we can, if we plug in this equation over here, we can define relative humidity as mass of water vapor divided by the mass of saturated water vapor and again times 100 to get result in percentages. So yet another way right to do this job. There is another way we can express relative humidity and that's the following. We know that, let me write it perhaps here, that mixing ratio is mass of dry air, sorry, mass of water vapor divided by the mass of dry air. So you can see I can substitute, express here that mass of water vapor is therefore equal mixing ratio, this is mixing ratio for water vapor, times mass of dry air. And therefore I can also write that mass of saturated water vapor is mixing ratio for saturation times mass of dry air. Substituting these equations over here, we can get that relative humidity can also be expressed as the mixing ratio for water vapor divided by the mixing ratio of saturated water vapor times 100. And similarly, we know that Q specific humidity, namely for water vapor, is equal mass of water vapor divided by the total mass of air, not mass of dry air, but total mass of air. So applying the same concept, we can write that relative humidity is also QV divided by QVS times 100. In principle, this formula, the first one that I wrote, is the one that is most often used, but I wanted to derive the other formulas that you can use if you have quantities, density, mass, mixing ratio, and specific humidity. 
So we can see if somebody tells you that relative humidity is let's say 70%. If we check this formula, what does it mean 70%? It means that air parcel or atmosphere around you is 70% saturated. In other words, you can add water vapor in the amount of 30 more percent at a given temperature to get saturation. And once you have saturation, that means atmosphere cannot take any more water vapor without condensation. And that is why this quantity is so useful for general public. Because relative humidity is 70%, it means you are at 70% of being saturated. 30 more percent and you will have condensation, namely saturation. But I would also like to now mention and demonstrate why this quantity, namely relative humidity, is not the best quantity to use in research. And we do not use it in research that often as much as at least mixing ratio. Let's just write one more time that relative humidity is E divided by ES. But you will remember that the ES is function of temperature times 100. And you will kindly remember that from my previous video that if we have temperature here and saturation vapor pressure here, that this dependency has this nonlinear behavior like this, given through powerful Clausius-Clapeyron equation. This is all from previous video. So as we are increasing temperature, saturation vapor pressure increases in this nonlinear fashion. Well, let us examine what that means. Let's say here I have a time, x axis is time, and y axis is uh, relative humidity. And let's introduce in red color, perhaps secondary y-axis to be temperature. Let us say at the beginning of this time interval temperature had this value and then it was constant and then temperature increased, it was constant and suddenly dropped and then uh, it was constant and then again dropped and it was constant. I just made it up. Let's assume temperature was changing like that during this period of time. How would relative humidity change? Now you have to remember that in this thought experiment, very important, we are not adding or removing water vapor from the atmosphere, from that parcel of air. So E is constant. I am not adding or removing more water vapor. But because ES is function of temperature in that way over there, if I start with relative humidity over here, let's say, then relative humidity will be constant because temperature is constant. But as the temperature is rising, relative humidity is falling. And then it's constant again because temperature is constant. And then temperature suddenly drops, which means relative humidity will suddenly increase and then drop down and then be constant and then drop down again, uh, temperature drops down, relative humidity increases and then goes constant like so. I made complicated temperature graphs, so I made my life difficult, but we managed. Point of this demonstration is that E is constant, which means no water vapor is added or removed from the atmosphere. But because temperature is changing, relative humidity is changing, which means it's not the best way of representing amount of moisture in the atmosphere. In fact, if you look into this definition, you will notice that relative humidity is not giving you the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. It is not. It is giving you how much moisture you have 
before you get saturated with water vapor. And that is different compared to, let's say, mixing ratio for water vapor that was mass of water vapor divided by the mass of dry air. You see, this quantity is actually giving you mass, how much water vapor is in the parcel of air. But for historical reasons and simplicity, relative humidity is often used to inform general public. Let us look into one more case, which is typical sometimes in uh, our atmosphere. Once again, we have time as our x-axis. And let's once again have relative humidity over here. And uh, let us say that here in the middle, so this is time. Here is noon, 12 p.m. local time. Let us say that here is then, oops, here is 6 a.m. local time. And here is uh, therefore 6 p.m. 18 hours. And then here is midnight and here is midnight, okay? If we go back to this secondary y-axis, that is temperature, we know that temperature is the highest around noon or 1 p.m., depends where you are. But let's just say temperature is the highest around this time, and then it's the lowest temperature is usually around just before sun, sunrise, around 5 p.m., 4 p.m., and, and then temperature rises to some value like so, which means temperature is decreasing, maybe like this. So this would be daily variation of temperature. And now imagine if during these 24 hours we do not remove or add water vapor to the atmosphere. And we can imagine that by thinking of air being very calm, very, very light winds, no clouds in the atmosphere, so a very small amount of water vapor would be added or removed. So if I plot relative humidity, let us say this is my, in oh, sorry about that, need to change color. Let us say this is my initial relative humidity. Well, as the temperature is dropping, relative humidity is increasing. And then as the temperature is increasing, relative humidity is dropping. And then I get something like this. So you can see that over a 24 hour period, relative humidity changed as a consequence of temperature change. Basically the same I represented here, but here I wanted to give you more realistic situation in the atmosphere. And we conclude, therefore, that relative humidity has this deficiency that we also noticed when we analyzed absolute humidity in one of my previous videos. Make sure to like and subscribe. And until next video, goodbye.